Hey folks, Kevin O'Connor here with Carolina's own Pot Force 5. Sitting here today with Lamont Creighton Hart. Lamont and I have uh, known each other for a couple of years. I've had the honor and pleasure of working with him on a couple of fashion shows here in the Queen City. Lamont is a multi-talented individual. He is a model, he's a fashion icon, he's a stylist, he's a creative director, he's even a small business owner, we'll get to in a little bit. But Lamont, uh, it's so great to be here with you today. How you doing? Likewise, I'm great, Kevin. It's a pleasure and an honor and to have you is. in the house of Lamont today. It's a beautiful day. So, what's going on these days with Lamont? Well, um, just continuing to use my gift though, Kevin. Uh, you know, I believe that fashion is my ministry. Uh, it's uh, a way for me to be able to use my gift uh, to help uh, the everyday gent uh, present his best foot forward. Uh, and um, in doing so, it's allowed me also that opportunity to collaborate with uh, another one of my brothers and sisters. You know, we believe in collaboration over competition. So uh, we've come together to create a, a one-stop shop for gentlemen here in the Queen City and abroad. Um, um, to be able to, again, like I say, just make sure that they're uh, taken care of like the king they are so that they can present their best foot forward. All right, well, we just left the man cave. Uh, now we're in the heart of the House of Lamont. How long have you been open, Lamont? Uh, we've been open since uh, 2013, Kevin, since 2013. But here uh, at 3010 Monroe Road since last May. So huh. going on a year anniversary. Huh. So where do you see the store going? What are your plans for it? Uh, right now we have aspirations of moving downtown uh, 2019 uh, into the new Brooklyn Village development. We're working with the city right now to be one of the uh, small businesses uh, that they'll be moving into that new complex. Nice. So just in a couple of years from now. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, I wish you luck with that. Thank you. Show us a little bit about your store. Uh, what are some of the high points that people come in and look for? Well, of course, you guys already come in and you saw me sit in an alpha male nail care getting my hands done. Uh, and once you're done there, we like to bring you out into the boutique. Uh, that's where we uh, have the opportunity to clothe, fit, or uh, provide you with services such as alterations or uh, styling. Uh, so out here in the boutique, we uh, not only carry a variety of uh, uh, vintage, one-of-a-kind vintage garments, uh, but I also do custom clothing as well. So we do custom suits, pocket squares, bow ties, uh, lapel flowers, what have you. Um, anything you need done or altered, repurposed, uh, I, I appreciate that opportunity to collaborate and basically make it happen. That's fantastic. What other services do you have here? Well, uh, Kevin, uh, the House of Lamont, bro, I, I, I basically just like to uh, consider it a platform to help uh, other local artisans uh, have a place to be able to sell and promote uh, their product as well. So we, we, we have custom leather jewelry. Uh, I told you that I make bow ties, but um, just like uh, Walmart, they don't just carry Walmart brand. I carry other designers that make bow ties as well. Uh, so again, that kind of confirms collaboration over competition. I can't create them all the time, you know, so a lot of times I'm sure. in here styling and it gives other people an opportunity to sell. Uh, in addition to that, I, um, we have uh, custom shoes uh, by More Couture. So, you know, Robert Jackson sure. himself, uh, he's been in several productions with us. So, uh, uh, likewise, I'm able to advocate what he does with his custom shoes and shirts. Uh, and this any other um, uh, local artisan or... You know, that, that start business owner, small business owner that want to get uh, a place to promote their product. You know, we just like to make sure that we're able to do that. Even Sheena, she has her own line of shea butter uh, that helps uh, gentlemen moisturize, keep their hands and body uh, moisturized. And nice. she has that on the shelf right behind you. Mm -hmm. So uh, make sure you guys take a look at it. Uh, definitely come check us out. Uh, and if not, uh, www.thehouseoflamont.com. If you click on Press and Media, you'll be able to see that nice little Observer article that's in the back. That'll give you a lot of insight uh, in regards to uh, why I got st or how I got started and uh, why I'm so passionate about uh, what I do and, and why I say fashion is my ministry. All right. 
Well, let's head to the front of the store and let's see if Sterling can set me up with some shoes. I'll grab you a vodka uh, while you're headed that way. Sounds good. Awesome. I'll see you there. All right. All right. Kevin. I appreciate your um, um, support today, sir. Appreciate you coming in. Let me take care of you for the derby. I'm going to go ahead and pass you off to Sterling so he can finish right. that final touch. Go ahead and don you with your hat oh, today, please, sir. Please. Uh, you know, that's important. Finishing touch. Yeah, absolutely. Put the uh, topping on the cake there, sir. Is that good? Uh, it's absolutely dapper as fuck. All right. All right, again. Thank you, sir. Stay dapper, my friend. Thank you, Lamont. It's been wonderful. Oh, what do we have here? And the cherry on top will be oh, vodka my and vodka. Tonic. Vodka tonic. Wow. The service is amazing. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh. So, Sterling, how long have you been working with the House of Lamont? I've been working here at the House of Lamont now for four months now. Four months? Yes, sir. That's great. How's it been going? It's going very well. Yeah. Very well. Um, I'm learning a lot of things my first time having my own business and what a good place to be in to learn the business. Sure, right. Well, I think that's wonderful. I love the collaboration. I love the, the small business working together. And, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. So I'm glad to see that. So I bet you have an a, a interesting clientele coming in here. I got a nice, interesting clientele now, but it's confidential. Oh, any any now. celebrities I was going to ask? <laughs> a lot. A lot of celebrities now, but... We just keep that amongst ourselves, though. Confidential. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I sir. appreciate that. Yes, you know what? I know they do as well. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's the way to do it. So the Hasla is going to help you out. And you come at your leisure. You come under privacy. And you just come and enjoy yourself. Leave and your worries. Yeah, exactly. Leave your worries out the doors. Out the door. Come in and be happy. Wow. I'm certainly happy. Come here and have a few drink. Have some cigars. Mm -hmm. Get your shoes shine. Get tailored. Get your feet and hands done. Nice. I'll skip the cigars, but I know hey, that's, that's enjoy nice your drink. <laughs> enjoy your drink. <laughs> that's how we like it. So, here. service to the door. Yes, sir. Thank you for the door. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful. Hope to see you again. You will. Enjoy your weekend. You will. Everything's been perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank sir. you, sir. Appreciate right. you, man. You Have bet. a good one, okay? You bet. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, that's it for the House of Le Mans. Kevin O'Connor with Carolina's Pod Force 5 signing off. Hey folks, it's uh, JC Kingsley here with Sun and Moon Studios. I'm reporting for Carolina's own Pod Force 5 today. I'm here with Miss Jada and Miss Sue. They are part of the staff out at Con Carolinas, uh, which is coming up quick on us this year. Um, and they wanted to let us know a little bit about the con and some things that have changed uh, just to let you guys know where you can find them at this year. So that's a big change for the con, right? Yes, we have come back to the Hilton Charlotte University Place, which is conveniently located off of I-85 and Harris Boulevard. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it's a lovely area. We're off of the lake feature, and there's lots of restaurants around. You can take a nice long walk around the lake feature and you know feed the geese unless they chase you. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a few more options around here than at the former location for people yeah. to get involved in and, and uh, 
That's uh, also, you know, she said it was off of 85. We're very close to 77 here also. So if you're out of town or it's coming into the kind, it looks like it's going to be a great place. Uh, and now something else for the kinds that I've taken part in in the past with you guys is the uh, panels that you have going on. So there's always a few that kind of stick out to, you know, that are, are kind of wacky, I guess you would say, uh, <laughs> the fun panels. And, and then you have a lot of serious panels for people that might want to get involved in everything from cosplay to publishing. And, and uh, it's been really interesting seeing what you guys put together there. Are there any that stand out in your mind that are well, going to be something for people to pay attention to? Shirley Kenyon, yeah. I think uh, Cheryl's going to, well, she's doing signings this year. She's, she's going to do signings. Cheryl Penyon is a an author, and she's a machine. You know, if you look at how many books that woman has out, she has a ton. I can't even, I would have to spend two years just to read through everything. So, uh, that would be popular. Uh, not, my personal favorite, um, not to slight anybody, but I'm really excited about Jess coming in from the uh, CCB. Yeah, WCCB's. Oh, Just Jess from CCB. Just Jess, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Chat, gotcha. you know, which is now you know national, you know, is being picked up nationally. And Congrats, Jess. Yay, uh, yeah, Jess. we are so excited to have her. Yeah, mm -hmm. she will be here on Saturday. She's going to do basically Super Chat uh, but here, a, but a big super chat. Yeah, you know, not just a half hour. We're going because the all the seasons will have ended, so we're going to rehash, you know, all of the seasons of Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, and we may even talk about Gotham and Lucifer. So it's almost like a binge watching session with director's notes or yes. something going on. That's yes. pretty neat. Okay, and, and Jess is so much fun, and she's going to be one of the. Uh, judges for the costume contest mm. and we have a special division in the costume contest based on any costume that has been seen on the DC small screen so it's from any of the shows or from their web streaming you know because they have the Vixen show on mm -hmm. web streaming they have some of the other ones so uh, okay yeah but DC only for that DC only DC but only. that's one go. section of our costume contest we have with the costume contest, we have our beginners, our uh, journeymen, and then our expert levels, and then we have best in show, best skit, and best original. Okay. So, and I, there are people who have been working on costumes for this convention since last year. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I know really, some of those guys get really crazy yeah. about how long they spend working on the costumes, yeah. but it's always impressive to see what they come up with. If they're going to spend that long on something. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So we're bringing a big focus back to our costumes. Yes. Ooh. Yes. We we definitely want to, you know, encourage people to do the very best they can. Mm -hmm. You know. And when they come in for pre-judging, you know, we encourage them to bring, you know, reference photos and, you know, how they made the costume. Okay. So. A little how-to for the people that are yeah. watching. Yeah. Okay. You know, well, you know, this is for the pre-judging, you know, so that the judges know, you know, oh, I didn't right, go right. out and buy this off Party the city costume. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I sat there and stuck my thumb 13 times with a needle trying to get this pleat just right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. So something else that changed this year, uh, to my understanding, is that you guys are not really selling tickets per se anymore. Well, so now it's yeah. a membership of some kind. Well, it's always been it's a always membership. been a membership. Uh, mm -hmm. We are a five hundred one C seven, and okay. so the designation is a membership. So I'm not going to be printing you a ticket. You have bought a membership to this convention. That comes with some benefits besides just being able to come to the event. We will make available as much as possible to our members, you know, such as if somebody has free downloads, we'll tell the membership. Uh, the membership got to vote on the badge artwork because yes, you do get a badge with your membership, uh, but you're buying the membership. Mm -hmm. And uh, the members get to vote in the Manly Wellman Wellman uh, Horror Award. Now, I want to get that right. I want to get the, the correct thing to you. I'll okay. send that to you. Uh, which is the best book of the year. 
Oh, okay, okay. So in the um, horror genre, it, you know, I think it's in the horror fantasy sci-fi okay. genre. Okay. Uh, he was well known for his horror stories, and mm -hmm. he was here in North Carolina. So to qualify, you have to be a North Carolina author. Uh, John Hartness won last year. He's one of our authors. Gotcha. So. He's the Bubba. He writes the yes, Bubba, Bubba the Monster yeah. Hunter okay. and Quincy Harker. Shout out to John. Yeah. Things that happened this past year was a movement called Hold On to the Light. And it was our writers who got together and over a hundred writers were involved. They all wrote blogs about um, their personal dealings with mental illness mm -hmm. and it was to raise awareness of mental illness and to where you can get help so you know we're going to have a panel about that gotcha. and about those issues because they're very important issues a lot of people deal with depression yeah, that's a big topic is there somewhere they can still find those blogs are they still online for people to take a look at through the website or something hold on to the light.com i believe um, okay and i'll get you the correct address after sure, sure. that and when she does we'll put it right here on the screen for you yeah. guys so awesome. check that out Outside of the panels and the guests that you guys have come every year, mm -hmm. uh, I know that one of the big attractions for people that are returning attendees are after the con shuts down in the evenings, you guys still have stuff going on. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that going to work here at the Hilton this year? Uh, the third floor is our room party floor. And, Noted. You know, we already have people signing up to host room parties. Cool. And, uh, you know, they have kind of free reign of the third floor, and we do have our security up there to make sure that you know people are safe. We want you to be safe. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So. And um, don't go crazy. The room is in someone's name, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't destroy the hotel. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then at the door. And the website is concarolinas.org dot org for you guys instead of com. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you type in dot com. It'll still take you. It'll take you there. Okay. So either one. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. It's a circuitous route that'll get you there. Yeah. yeah. Dot, dot org is our main, you know, because of the 501c7. Gotcha, gotcha. So. And they can buy day passes or weekend passes or however, yeah. whatever fits your schedule, guys. So. Yeah, you can buy, you know, if you want to come just on Friday, you can buy that. If you want to come just on Sunday, you can buy that. Gotcha. You okay. know, uh, we do recommend that if you're coming on Saturday and you think you're going to stick around on Sunday for some programming, buy the full weekend membership. It's a $10 difference. Sure, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So. Better deal. Uh, we are interviewing before the schedule has come out, but by the time this is airing, you guys will be able to go to the website and take a look at the schedule and yes. figure out exactly what you want to go pay attention to and check out uh, there at the con. So make sure you do that. Get those tickets purchased. We're three weeks out? Two? Three weeks out. Three weeks out, guys. So <laughs> get in there and get them. Uh, let's try to you know get Hilton to match their capacity, I guess. Let's see, see how much we can pack in here. Uh, there'll be plenty of going, uh, plenty going on at the con, and lots of people for you to meet, and lots of events going on all the way into the wee hours of the night, most likely. Uh, so y'all come out and check it out. Okay. It's been uh, great talking with you ladies today, and we look forward to seeing you at the con this year. Thank Good you luck for with everything. Us. Thank you. Break a leg, whatever they say <laughs> in the con business. Everything in me is already broken. So. <laughs> All right. Heal. All right. Well, thank this you has for been having us. absolutely yes, our pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been JC Kingsley with Con uh, with Con Carolina with Carolina's <laughs> own Pod Force Five guys, and we'll see you again next time. Hi folks, Kevin J. O'Connor here with Carolina's own Pod Force 5. 
sitting here today with my good friend Will Fisher. Will and I have known each other for uh, three or four years. We've had a number of times to work together on some projects, uh, most notably the 48-hour film project, which we're going to hear an awful lot about today. So Will, uh, why don't you share with our audience a little bit about uh, who you are, what you do, uh, when did you come to Charlotte, and when did you start working in the film industry? Definitely. I um, joined a uh, kind of a local filmmaking crew about, uh, I guess, five or six years ago. I was doing some smaller social media type films, and uh, one of the guys had heard of this crazy, zany thing called the 48 Hour Film Project. Mm -hmm. And I never heard of it, but I was game, you know, we put our hat in the ring and um, showed up and just was really blown away. Not by the way that it was produced in Charlotte, but by the fundamentals that it held for uh, the city. It's a, uh, it is an international filmmaking competition. Mm -hmm. It is held in 137 cities around the world. And the format is such that uh, filmmakers come together, they form a team. Uh, we all meet together on a Friday night. Uh, each team leader comes to the front of the room and draws at random a genre of film. Once each team has their assigned genre, we then open a sealed envelope which contains a character's name, a prop, and a line of dialogue. Okay, so so let me stop you. So the 48 Hour Film Project, the team leaders come up and they pick the genre. So there are how well, many 20, genres? 22 genres. Uh, the ones you know, comedy, dark comedy, horror, but then... Uh, there's western. More, there's western. There's film musical, noir. Film noir. Road movies. Silent movies. Buddy movies, silent movies. Buddy. Uh, there's there's 22, 22 genres that are in there. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more, more obscure, right. some are not sci-fi. And, and when they pick their genre, is that it? They have to do it? Uh, it's changed over the years. Um, they have a um, they have a pool of secondary genres. So if you don't like the one genre that you pull, mm -hmm. uh, you can put it back, and then you're committing to the one that you pulled. No matter time. what. Yeah. Right. And then last year they actually changed it up a little bit. Um, it was you pull two genres, and then you choose which genre you want to make. Yeah. So um, that is. You know, as much as a genre can be adopted, mm -hmm. um, that is the thing that I've seen over the years that really just cramps the brain. I mean, people have, going into Friday night, it's like these directors, they have an idea of what it means to do a comedy right. or what it means to do a sci-fi film. And um, I think that maybe they're a little bit intimidated or um, maybe eager in some, and Definitely part of the fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all a part of it. It's all just, um, it's a part of that excitement. I'll tell you that last year, uh, we had about 225 people come to watch the drawings. Mm -hmm. This is just to watch people come and draw them out. It's amazing. The envelope. Yeah. How After, many teams? There's 33 teams. Last year. 33 last teams, year. 225 people or so to, there to watch Friday the ceremony, night, yeah. right? And the, the energy that is in the room is to be experienced. Mm -hmm. And I invite everyone to come out and be a part of this. The room clears out in, right. four, in four minutes. So once the team leaders pick their genre, there's sealed envelopes where uh, Will or a designate will announce the line of dialogue that must be used by all participating teams, a prop, and a character's name. And a character's name. Those three things are are must be included. Included in the film. no matter what film you do. Yeah. And the clock on the forty eight hours starts immediately seven, after that meeting. Seven oh one. Seven oh one. So forty eight hours. So you saw two hundred twenty eight cockroaches scatter. They scatter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what happens year over year? The the teams that that come back each year they kind of get an idea of the rhythm mm -hmm. of how that weekend goes. Because if you got 48 hours to make a film, then you're going to probably need 10 to 12 hours to edit. Yeah. So you kind of start uh, mapping the time back to there. That means that you go into the writer's room, you know, 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And probably by midnight, you have, should have a fully fleshed out script. Mm -hmm. This way you know which characters, the location, you know, the crew. You pretty much have an idea of the the mm -hmm. plot, and then someone is just on the phone through the night, lining up actors to be at locations, 
and most of the teams uh, will have a 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. call time. Mm -hmm. We'll shoot all day Saturday, and then we'll get all the footage to the editor right. uh, late Saturday night so that he can be doing the final edit. Uh, they'll do special effects and um, audio um, and sound design a little bit later into the edit, but it's all got to be pressed out and on a jump drive in a form that I can hit play and the movie starts. Because 7 p.m. on that Sunday, the 48th hour on the dot, that's it. That's no it. submissions after that. Yes. Yeah, that Facebook page for the Charlotte 48-hour film project will have ways to get involved and it'll have links and, and people and folks to uh, and you can call well in advance. Directly. You can message me directly uh, through that page and that really becomes my uh, function in this in the days leading up to it. I'm, I'm just start filling the emails. Guys, hey man, I've got all this sound equipment. I haven't drug it out in years but I saw this event and I want to be involved and I'm you know, some director has already told me, man, we got everything but a sound guy. Right. I mean, help me find a sound guy. I'm like, okay, here's your sound guy. <laughs> so what are the dates this year for the 48 Hour? Well, there are three dates that are important for the 48 Hour Film Project. Um, the first date is the filmmaking weekend. Mm -hmm. The second date are the general screenings. And then the third date is the best of screenings. So um, August 11th, 12th, and 13th is the filmmaking weekend. That's the, the Friday night is the 11th. We show up at 7, we draw the genres. Everybody's due back at 7 o'clock on Sunday, the 13th. Got it. That following Friday, I will have the films prepared and ready to screen, and we will screen all of them. And that's another thing about the 48. It's not like a traditional festival where you submit, and if they like your work, they'll show it in public. That is really the cool thing also for up-and-coming filmmakers is that if you make a film, regardless of the quality, regardless of how it turned out, it will be screened in public. Are there any other categories? It, by definition, the 48 is a level playing ground. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that I uh, have worked with um, the, student, the uh, film departments at UNCC and folks at CPCC, and there is an opportunity to even have like a battle of the schools sure. kind of thing, because there's a lot of you know students that have the gear and have the know-how that can do it. And so that is something that we've talked about, is having an exhibition mm -hmm. that is one team from each school participates, and then we, yeah. we would have that. And so what that would look like is it would be a particular hour on that following Friday. Right. Yeah. So it's not fully set up, but registration hasn't opened yet either. It's a marketing opportunity yeah. to say, hey, represent your school, represent exactly. your uh, your group, and it, it, a lot of pride on uh, on the line for for, school. for right. ranking and, and making that final screening yes. or the best of. And, and that's, that's a big I, night. And that's what I was going to say. That is that's the quintessential night. That is the night that. We've had the mayor come out. Last year we had the chairman of the Mecklenburg County Commission. We have uh, movie producers come out to see the talent. We have business owners to come out to, um, to, to see the, the filmmaking talent in Charlotte. And that is happening at the McGlowan Theater on August 26th. There are 720 seats at the McGlowan Theater. So this would literally be one of the largest shows of support for local film in Charlotte history. So, Will, what does the 48-hour film project mean to you? And really, what does it mean to Charlotte? Yeah, it is a, uh, it's, it's an international platform. And uh, when I f first became interested in it, I, um, I just had a kind of a fundamental idea that a good way to rally people in Charlotte uh, is to point to something greater than ourselves. And um, if there was an opportunity for someone here locally uh, to be recognized at the highest level uh, within film, which is the art form of our time, um, that this would be a way to really unite our city and, and maybe unite some of the uh, creative communities that are here, mm -hmm. kind of give them a reason to come together and work together so that we as a city can put our best foot forward. And so um, after four years, that really is the, um, the to me, the greatest potential uh, 
that lies within the 48 hour film project is that, um, and it's not something that's going to happen, uh, it, it has happened and it is happening, mm -hmm. you know, and each year um, it happens more and uh, more people adopt it, uh, more people uh, sign up for a team, uh, more people join teams, and uh, if you've been to the screenings, you know that every year there are more films that are on that kind of the A grade film um, where the special effects, the acting, the directing, the costumes, everything is working together. So anything else with collaboration films? Yeah, definitely. Uh, check us out. Collaborationfilms.org is our website. That's the work of Blake Phillips on there. Um, you can definitely get uh, find out more information for the canned screening and the dinner and the movies packages. Uh, there's also information about early registration if you want to uh, create a team and participate in the 48-hour film project. Uh, throughout the summer, we will have cinematography seminars, directing seminars, writing seminars. Uh, there'll be acting auditions. For actors that want to join the the, um, the fun and, and join a team, so um, really, collaboration films is the portal that Blake and I use to push out. And um, if people are interested to join in events or to participate in the 48, mm -hmm. that's really the, the website to be watching. And of course, the Facebook page also, facebook.com/slash Charlotte 48 Hour Film. That's great, Will. Well, Carolina's Pop Force 5, we look forward to sharing all that information with our viewers as well. So, wonderful to see you. Thank you for yeah, coming man. in. Perfect, man. Can't wait. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Dave Hartlikin here for Carolina's own Pod Force 5. I am here at the Carowinds Crossing Shopping Center in South Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, we're about to check out a really cool little place. This is uh, Charlotte's own little kind of little shop of horrors, if you will. This place is called the Creature's Crypt. Um, I could tell you everything that this place is, but I'd rather just show you. So uh, why don't you come with me and let's check this joint out. see taking one look in this place this is not like most stores you're going to encounter especially in Charlotte so uh, let's look at this first of all one of the first things that caught my eye walking in here was an actual life-size amazing Zombo the Great and uh, it, it's a very rare opportunity to get to interview such a man and what Zombo what, what oh right yeah I don't have 25 cents on me so I can't interview him but uh but yes this is just a start. There is so much cool stuff in here that uh, I'm just going to have to take you through and show you all of it. So uh, why don't you follow me? Let's check out more stuff. As you can see, they've also got t-shirts, all different types of t-shirts. They've got toys as well, and collectibles, and even notebooks. I mean, they have all this different stuff that you're just not going to find at regular stores, even cool stores. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just take a look around this place. They have so much going on, and so much that you're just not going to find anywhere else. <laughs> But of course, that's not all. They also have records. I mean, check this stuff out. They have actual vinyls for the From Beyond soundtrack there. There's Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. They've got Chum. They've got Goosebumps. All types of great stuff. If you like horror soundtracks, and I personally do, they've got that in spades. Also, they have comic books. I mean, you like horror comics, you're not going to find them a lot of places, or you're going to pay, you know, far out the you-know-what for it. But uh, they got it in pretty reasonably priced, I might add. Check out the books, they got that going on. 
But wait, there's more. These guys also sell masks. So, you know, when Halloween season's coming up and you're looking for some cool costume stuff, check this out. I mean, everything from retro to modern and everywhere in between, these guys have got it all. But that's still, still, believe it or not, not the coolest part. Let me go show you the coolest part. Now for the coolest part. The seriously coolest part. They don't just sell cool stuff and sell cool masks. They also make them. I'm standing here with Greg, who is the owner and operator of this fine establishment. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, so uh, if you look behind us, uh, so you guys with uh, Creature Revenge Studios, you created all of these yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we design them, we sculpt them, we mold them, all the way through painting, finishing, hair work, all that stuff. So what, what possessed you guys to open up a store like this in, in Charlotte, of all places? Well, we used to have our production studio, uh, one exit further north from here, and we were doing mass production and doing work for uh, Spirit Halloween and Morris Costumes, and just kind of got tired of doing it and wanted to downsize and move to a new location and open up the store as part of it, kind of uh, celebrating things that we collect and buy and love and that we think other people like to collect and buy and love and give them a look into what we do on a daily basis at the same time. <laughs> So this is the studio side of things over in this area. This is where we produce all of our masks and costumes and props and stuff like that here in house. So an on-location studio, that is that is really something. Um, and yeah, have a moment, take a moment guys, look around this place. They've got all the different stuff and you can kind of look and see the process as it's coming. Like I'm looking around seeing some unfinished masks all the way to the finished product. So if so, you guys mentioned you work with a lot with Universal Studios. You work with a lot of different films. So how would uh, any aspiring or even current filmmakers uh, get in touch with you guys to possibly work with you? Uh, they can visit our website at uh, uh, creaturerevenge.com, um, or they can shoot me an email at uh, greg at creaturerevenge.com and just kind of let us know what you're looking for and whatnot. We can kind of you know go through the whole process and work with you on from anywhere from design all the way up through creation. That is outstanding. <laughs> So, would you mind uh, showing us around a bit? Sure. Showing us the kind of how the process works. Sure. Uh, most things start over here. I'll um, sit and kind of design something up and then take it and put it into clay. Um, this is a piece I'm working on currently. And so I'll kind of keep working here in clay and kind of, you know, massage it and get it all to the point where it's done and ready to mold it. And then we'll uh, send it back this way. And uh, over in this section, this is where we do all of our um, mold making and casting. So we'll take the sculpture that I have there, we'll do a stone mold on it, and then we'll run latex in it, or we'll do a silicone mold and run resin in it, or whatever the final piece needs to be. Uh, and then that all happens here, and then it gets cast up into its final material over here before it gets sent back up to paint. All right, and uh, you had mentioned earlier that paint is probably the, the sexiest and most attractive part to the general audience. So. It is. Do you mind if we take a look over at your paint section? Sure. So the final the final step, of course, would be right over here at paint, right? Yep. Yeah, once it's done being uh, molded and then cast up into its material, we bring it back up here to the paint area, and this is where you know, I'll sit and do any paint work or hair work and glossing and all the finished work that goes into it that makes it a final piece. And it's definitely the most attractive part because where it all comes together. So that's why we kind of put it up at the front so people who come into the store can kind of see the final steps and see how everything kind of comes together at the end. Kind of like an, an, a whole other product that you're offering at the store. You know, you can come in yep. here and just see how the process of making the stuff comes. Yep, and, and a lot of the pieces will come right off this desk and go right through the door and right onto the shelf to be sold out there. So, I mean, it's it's, it's direct from the artist to the buyer as you can get. Yeah, cutting out the middleman. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, all right, so I guess we're going to pitch it right back out front. All right, so how long would you say it takes you on average to make uh, just one of these masks? It, it's kind of all over the place. Um, some of them take, you know, a couple days in the sculpt, and then a day in molding, and then a day or so in paint, you know. Um, other ones can go on a lot longer. Uh, bigger pieces take longer, more complicated pieces take longer. But you know, usually anywhere from two to four days kind of sculpting and then you know, 
painting from there. So you mentioned, you know, you guys work with Morris Costumes, Spirit Halloween. Uh, you guys also, however, you've worked with some even bigger fish out there, haven't you? Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Um, we've done work for Universal Studios uh, for Singapore for their Halloween Horror Nights event. Uh, we've provided products to Six Flags for their Halloween events. Um, I've sculpted uh, recently the Men in Black products for Ghoulish Productions and some pictures. And we do a lot of stuff for other companies as well. And sculpture work for hire and producing props. We do stuff for uh, Netherworld in Atlanta all the time. So we, we kind of do a lot of work all over the place. That is fantastic. And uh, and uh, you guys are open. Uh, you guys are open six days a week just to the general public, huh? Yep. Yeah, we're open uh, pretty much every day but Monday. Um, we're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday. That is fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and uh, guys, if, you, if you're in the area, come down and check this place out. Seriously. Uh, they're located just off of Carowinds Boulevard in Charlotte. So uh, right off of exit 90 off 77. So yeah, I've been Dave Harlequin. He's been Greg. And this is Carolina's own Pod Force 5. We'll catch you next time.